Hello, Bards Academy. I'm Allison Park. I'm the founder of Bren French Single Malt Whiskey, and I'm really excited to share with you a couple of fun things about this today. We're gonna to talk about where it's made, how it's made, what it tastes like and why, and how to use it. So, if you have a bottle open, or even just at home, like I do, go ahead, pour yourself a little dram, and we're gonna enjoy this together as we do a little bit of a deep dive into Bren Whiskey, the history, the know-how, the whys. <laughs> All right, first things first, French single malt, yes! Single malts can be made anywhere in the world. So most people associate single malts having come from Scotland with scotch, but now we are seeing some beautiful and incredible single malts being made all over the world, from the US to Japan, from India to France. Oh my gosh, this is so good. If you have this at home, I'm sorry we don't have smell-o-vision yet, but it's incredibly, it's incredibly fruit forward and floral and and delicious. <laughs> it's, like, it's like creme brulee and bananas foster. Mm. I love this whiskey. We're drinking and talking about our estate cask bottling, which is what we have um, in all the countries that we distribute Bren. In the US only, we do do some limited bottlings of our Bren 10, but we're not gonna be talking about that today. We're just gonna be focused on estate cask. So, single malts, yes, they can come from anywhere in the world. We make ours in France. Why France? Especially when you say, wait a minute, I'm sorry, you founded this whiskey and you definitely sound like an American. Oui, bien sûr, je suis américaine. Yes, of course, I'm an American. I live here in New York City where I'm filming this little tutorial and I do produce this whiskey in the cognac region of France. Why, you ask? Very good question. So when I first fell in love with single malt whiskeys, I was like, these are amazing. I really fell in love with Japanese whiskeys first. And I wondered, did I fall in love with Japanese whisk single malts, right? Just talking about single malts. Did I like them because they were made in Japan? Did I like them because their techniques were different from those done in Scotland? Or did I like them because maybe they were using some local and indigenous ingredients? And I did a deep dive and then I really wondered, was anyone trying to show terroir in single malt whiskeys? And terroir is this term we hear a lot in the wine industry. And it basically just means having a sense of place in the smell and taste of a product. So you'll hear sommeliers talk about terroir. It's why one in Japan or in New York City can open up a bottle of wine and tell you what mountain region in France it's from. Like, that's pretty cool. And I was like, hey, we should be able to do this in single malts. And when I realized no one was making a whiskey the way I thought possible, I said, let's go. Let's go to France and figure this out. So I went, I found a partner. I work now with an amazing, tiny, tiny little distillery in the cognac region of France. They do still make cognac that is their bread and butter. And once a year, they work with me to distill Bren whiskey. So what does that mean having terroir in single malts? Well, we translated that to mean 100% of our ingredients are local to the distillery. And this is from grain, yeast, water, still type, we took it to take a technical approach as well, and our wood. All the things that create the end effect of the taste of a whiskey, right? So, our barley. If you walk out the back door of our distillery, you walk into these beautiful vineyards, and the vineyards are what make the grapes for the cognac production, and flanking those are these unbelievable um, barley fields. So two heirloom varietals of barley are grown strictly for us. They're grown to EU organic standards. So we are certified organic or biologique or bio or however it is it needs to be said in any of your languages. <laughs> um, but we are certified EU standards, which in the United States, our USDA automatically um, approves anything that's EU standard because they're a little bit higher and more strict than we are in the US in our standardization. Fun fact. Um, so organic heirloom barley grown by us. So we are farm to table. We are using our proprietary strain of yeast that is local to the cognac region, which is pretty cool. And we use local water. And then in terms of the still, most single malts are distilled in a pot still. It looks like a giant onion. And we, when I started looking at like, what are the opportunities for us? Cognac is a grape-based distillate that is made in the cognac region of France. Cognacs made outside of cognac France are brandy. 
Um, basically, it's distilled wine if you take a very top level approach. Just like in Champagne, it can only be made in Champagne, France. Otherwise, Champagne made outside of Champagne, France is basically categorically sparkling wine. Lots of other variations within there, but you'll go with me at a top level approach for now. So here I am in Cognac, France going, hey, you all make Cognac. And I learned that their stills, if a pot still looks like a giant onion, an Alembic Charente still, which is the still of the Charente region, which is the Cognac region, has a second little globe on top. It's very cool. And that little globe that goes then on, um, that feeds kind of into the big um, globe on the bottom is what forces a lot of the fruit forward molecules through in the distillate. So those ester molecules are what you experience when you find things like uh, stone fruits or bananas and things like that in your whiskey flavors. It's not a flavored whiskey, but just in the tasting notes and the smell notes, the nosing notes of a whiskey. Those are typically ester molecules that can be generated in the distillation process. So we are using a still that is local to the region. It is the cognac still. And then I said, wait a minute, what about the oak? Most single malts in the world are aged in ex bourbon barrels that come from Kentucky and ex sherry barrels that come from Spain. And I'm like, hang on, mm -mm, we're in France, right? If this is France, in the middle of your middle finger is where Paris is. Fold France or your hand in half and go all the way over to the West Coast. And this is where cognac is. Now the forests of France that produce French oak go basically down your hand in a diagonal line. And there are seven main forests that are dotted along that line. If you go from Cognac and you go east, you will hit the Limousin forest. Limousin produces Limousin oak. Limousin is the most expensive species of French oak. It's incredibly elegant and very refined, and it gives these incredible creme brulee notes. We use 100% Limousin oak in Bren, and we are the first single malt in the entire world to age a whiskey like so. Some of our whiskey is done in, exclusively in new French Limousin oak, and some of our whiskey is done in exo cognac barrels. That's right, we're not using bourbon, we're not using sherry, we use new French oak and exo cognac. This is going to, that all that technique, but mostly those barrels, produces for you a whiskey that doesn't taste like anything else on the shelf. It's incredibly unique and incredibly approachable and really fun. And so you take this very nerdy concept of terroir in single malt whiskeys and you distill it all down to something that can be enjoyed worldwide and experienced all together. And in my opinion, is frankly beautiful. I hope you enjoy that quick little tutorial, tutorial about how and why. Now, the taste. I've been talking about it throughout, but let's get really serious. It is fruit forward, floral, creamy. I can give you tasting notes and those are gonna be things that relate to me. And depending really on where you grew up in the world, the way I might think of the blueberry muffin tops, that might mean nothing to someone in France or another part of the world. So. I would love to hear from you and please write in the comments below when you get your hands on our estate cask or our brand 10 if you come over to the US to get a bottle. Um, let me know what you taste. Let me know what you experience and what that relates to in your palate, right? In your cultural palate. Um, usage, very fun. I love this as is. You can definitely put a big rock in your glass and pour this out and go right on the rocks, of course. You can definitely add a splash of water if you want. It is 40% ABV, so um, 80 proof. I don't know that it needs the water, but if that's your preference, by all means, add it. And lastly, in terms of cocktails, I love this in a highball. Take a glass, fill it with ice, two ounces of Bren on top, and fill the rest up with Perrier or a sparkling water of your choice. I love this in Old Fashions, Manhattans, Sazeracs, um, Boulevardier, basically a whiskey drinker's Negroni. In other words, I love this. <laughs> I hope this helps. Comment, ask questions. Please follow Bren on social media and tag us in your comments so we can make sure we pop back in and are responding to any of your questions and comments. And um, feel free to follow me as well. B-R-E-N-N-E -N -N -E, Whiskey. That's how you find us on social media. I'm Allison Park, my name's somewhere on the back. <laughs> P-A-R-C for the last name, and I hope this was really helpful. Thanks, cheers everyone.